Welcome to a new episode of the Video Vision channel. Today we will talk about ITER. There are problems at ITER at present, which you could read in the press. So I will talk with Alberto Loarte, who is the head of the ITER Science Division, about what these problems are. He will explain to us. And then I will also talk about the role of ITER, how this is still the flagship of the program and will continue to play the role that it should originally play, although there will be delays in its schedule. So today we are talking about the ITER experiment, the ITER device, which we have talked about a lot already. And today actually I want to talk about problems that occurred with the assembly of the ITER machine. ITER has been in the press always as the flagship and the cornerstone of our program, but also because there could be further delays because of these problems which have happened. I think these are the problems that happen when you do something which is at the forefront of science, technic, technology and engineering. And in fact, we, we encountered stuff like this with W7X as well. Of course, on this scale, it is something which is really big and so it takes its time to repair, to find strategies to uh, go around. So there are two main obstacles which have occurred. One being that the vacuum vessel sectors are not fulfilling the full specification and the welding is more difficult than that was thought in the beginning. And the other one, there is a so-called thermal shield, which is used for the insulation, the thermal insulation of the cryostat. And also there, there were problems due to a treatment which led then that there is corrosion occurring where it should of course not be. So since I'm not a specialist in the ITER technology, we have invited Dr. Alberto Loarte, who is the head of the ITER Science Division, and he will tell us all about this. So welcome, Alberto. Welcome. Thanks for being available for all of this. So maybe we can start with the vacuum vessel. Can you explain what went wrong with the vacuum vessel sectors? Okay, the, the problem with the vacuum vessel sectors is that they are very large structures. Uh, they measure like, you know, 8 meters or 10 meters tall. They weigh 600 tons. And you have to weld, uh, the, the, at the end, it's like a donut. It is like a donut, the vacuum vessel. And it's made in slices. And you have to weld to the two slices together. But you weld them, you have to weld them from the inside. So you weld the outside part. It's like a two-layer vessel. And you weld from the inside the outer part and then the inner part. And there were inaccuracies in construction. They were not very large. I mean, we are not talking of very large inaccuracies, but uh, this has a quite a strong implication for the way the vacuum vessel is welded. Because this is a nuclear vacuum vessel, it has to fulfill some requirements, and the welding procedure is, is qualified. And these inaccuracies actually make a big difficulty to the welding procedure. So it's not so much that one cannot do what is supposed to do, but the qualification of the procedure is not valid with this. And therefore, we have to repair these inaccuracies to recover the original procedure. Okay, as far as I know, you have an idea how to do it, and you have a supplier, a, a no. industry who would do this, right? Yeah, the idea would be to recover this, basically to, to repair this, so there are areas where they are misalignment, to add material, remove material, and get back to the to the original requirements. And indeed, yes, there are companies that are qualified to do that, and there is a, they have, we have put the contract out, and, and this has been actually now signed, and repairs will start very soon. We are going to one of the vacuum vessel sectors is already installed in place, and it's going to be taken out uh, in the next few days. So repairs will start very, very soon. Okay. So not good, but there is an action in place. Exactly. Yes. Okay, very good. Then um, the other one is about the thermal shield. What happened there? So the thermal shield, as, as you said, is a, a shield which is around the, the cryostat of the vessel to prevent the heat from coming from ambient temperature into the vacuum and also around the vacuum vessel because the vacuum vessel is at 100 degrees C and is in very close contact within tens of centimeters with toroidal field coils which are at minus 269 degrees. So you have to put like a thermal screen which is at minus, more or less, is at minus 200 uh, uh, minus 180 degrees. And, uh, and this thermal shield had uh, pipes in which we circulate uh, helium, gaseous helium, 
and they have developed, as you said, corrosion. When they were welded, there was not a proper cleaning of the material that we used to clean the, 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 these thermal seals, and this has led to long-term corrosion. This would not be identified at the beginning, because this is a process that uh, takes place with time. Then if, you, if this uh, helium goes out of this pipe, then it goes into the vacuum of the cryostat, and this leads to two problems. One is that you cannot keep vacuum, therefore you cannot keep good thermal insulation. And the second is that you have a low pressure gas, and this can lead to discharges. So you can have like arcs inside the cryostat, mm -hmm. and this can damage the coil. So we have to repair this. So the repair is in the case of the vacuum vessel, the thermal seal, which is around the vacuum vessel, because there is very little space, you have to take the, you have to dismount the vacuum vessel sector and dismount it, and then the the pipes will be removed and rewelded with the right material and ensuring there is no corrosion. For the cryostat, since we have installed already the bottom part, and to to remove it would mean to disassemble everything we have assembled, and this would be some years of effort. The, the idea is to put another screen around it. So, because there is space there, there is space. And so there will be two sets of different repairs, but the the final goal is to recover the same screening in terms of heat that we had before. Okay, very good. So this, of course, means a delay. I know there was, so it was said that 2025, end of 2025 would be the start of ITER operations. I think while we don't have a date for this, it's clear that this will not happen. And of course, everybody wants to know how long of a delay. Okay. So at the moment, we don't know because as I said, the repairs have started and we are, we, we don't want to give dates that we, we may change in the next few months. But our plan is to have by, by before the end of next year, there will be a formal approval of the of the new plan that we have. This will also affect not only the repairs, but also the experimental plan. And the, the present schedule is to to have an initial proposal to the governing board of ITER, which is called the ITER Council by summer next year, with the goal to have the, the plan approved by the by the end of, of, of you know, November next year. So sometime between June and November next year, we will have the, the date. Okay. So that, that I understand because if you just spit out a number which doesn't have mm -hmm. a base, you will have to correct it again, which is not what you yep. want to face. Yeah. So, um, of course, the, the date which we are most interested in is Q equals 10. So it's actually not the commissioning or say the first operation of ITER, but the DT operation and showing that there is 10 times more energy or power coming out of the plasma than is deposited in order to heat it. So I heard that you're also re-evaluating the strategy, how you get to Q equals 10? Yeah, the, the reason is that before we have a strategy when now the, the assembly of the core of the machine is clearly delayed. But the, the construction of the systems that we need to operate the machine doesn't have to be delayed. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when we assemble the machine, we, we will have more systems available than we had before. And therefore, we can make a more intense experimental program. So the idea before the experimental program was based to the availability of the systems. Now, actually, the systems are available before the, the tokamak is assembled. So the idea is to optimize this. And we are looking to shorten this period, and in particular, uh, also to, to try to make a more robust plan. So the, the, the plan will be shorter but we will have more systems to, to support it. And also we want to, in the process of developing the plan, of course, research has happened. Our original plan was elaborated, let's say, in the, in the period of 2016-20, and there have been research in between. So we are some areas where we took some assumptions, we have realized that they are not good assumptions. Other areas where we were conservative, we have realized that we may not have to be so conservative. I mean, in terms of exploitation of the machine, take time dedicated to this. And this is why we are trying to develop a new plan, which actually bring us to, to Q equal 10. It will not be earlier than before, but it will not be a rigid uh, shift of time compared to the delay. Okay. I, I think you're also evaluating to put a full tungsten wall, which I've talked about in this channel because this is something we are doing on the Aztex upgrade device at home. This is, of course, part of the plan, and the logic here would be 
that since we have to provide, I mean, ITER is a, an important, uh, well, as you said, is the flagship of the fusion program, and we want to provide information for the future of fusion development, including the fusion reactors. One of the things that we know in ITER is that the, the material that we have chosen for the world to start with, because it is easier from the point of view of plasma contamination, which is beryllium, it's not a long-term solution for fusion. So the original plan of ITER, the original plan of ITER considered that after we have demonstrated the main goals of fusion production, we would change this world to tungsten. It was already always in the plan. And we actually changed the design of the world in 2007 to allow this. Now, the problem is that because we have this delay and the fusion program has to progress, we also want to maintain ITER in line with the fusion program. And because of this, and because there has been research, like in Arte Subred, showing that there are risks, but there are also mitigation, what we want is to change the, to bring this, this installation of the, of the tungsten world forward, but also to install systems that we know mitigate the risk. And the, this is what we are optimizing at the moment. So the plan would be to start with the tungsten world, with a specific heating mix that we know is a specific, is suited from the experience of Artes Abrid and other tokamaks that have operated with the, with the tungsten world. We know it's best to, to mitigate the risk of plasma contamination and then in that way, when we achieve Q equal 10, we will also achieve Q equal 10 with a fully relevant machine in terms of what we plan to do in a, in a reactor. Okay, thanks a lot. I think this is really important, not just having rigid shift, but since, since you're looking at changing boundary conditions, you can also take advantage of it in order yeah. to change and adapt such that it is not just a rigid linear thing. I will actually talk about this later yeah, in yeah. this video again. Okay. So thanks a lot for this, Alberto, and good luck with everything. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. We look forward to the progress. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Okay, so there will be delays, we heard. It's not clear how long. And also the strategy is adopted such that it would better fit the requirements of a demo or first-of-a-kind fusion power plant. So I, I actually showed a view graph some weeks ago in one of the videos, the five myths of fusion, where I talked about this parallelization of ITER and DEMO. So that the taking out the hard coupling of the milestones, this has actually been misinterpreted in the sense that people said, ah, then we don't need ITER anymore because if you can do it anyway, why wait for ITER? This is absolutely not the case. So in fact, if you go through the different phases that ITER gives the information to our program, to a first of a kind power plant or to a demo power plant, depending on how you would call it. Well, first of all, there is the design and construction, which clearly has more or less even been finished for ITER. So this information is available and it's absolutely vital because this is the first machine of this kind nuclear environment which does this. So we learned a lot of lessons. Then there will be the phase of assembly in the next years, we just heard that it's not clear how long this will take, it will be some years. Well, again, we're designing demo or the first of a kind power plant now. So whatever we learn about the assembly process, like this stuff with a vacuum vessel, where you have to be more careful, obviously, we learn this and we take this into account in the design. So this is the next point where you see ITER, ITER is bringing the information for it. Then after assembly, there will be the commissioning. So if the commissioning comes somewhere in the I don't know, 2030s. This is way before commissioning of the fusion power plant or the demo. So again, you will have the information available. It might not influence the design anymore, but how the, the way how you bring this up, how you get all this to work in an integrated manner is something that is again vital and will inform demo. And then there's Qcals 10 we talked about which says this is the way I will have to run my power plant in order to have a burning plasma in there. And again, this will inform how we do the operation. And this was always on a time scale where you would not start from scratch the design of demo. It is rather informing the operation of demo. And then finally, I think this is the only point where it really slips a bit is the test blanket module. So there are breeding blanket modules for testing in ITER, the way it looks now, the decision which one to choose will have to made, be made before this. And still this doesn't mean they are obsolete because it means that 
the integrated operation of this in ITER will still come before a demo or the first of a kind power plant. So if you sum this up, there is like five points I mentioned, four of them. Basically, it doesn't change the way the information is flowing. One just has to realize that it's not only Q equals 10 we are looking at. There is this information from ETA coming in all the time into our program, and it's absolutely vital because it's the first nuclear device, really nuclear device in this environment. And then the fifth one, we still learn a lot from this. So it is clear that ETA remains the flagship of the program, and we have to have it in order to learn all these steps and to secure the information about how to commission and operate the machine. This was actually confirmed in a meeting to which I went two, two weeks ago from the time when we do this video here. I was at a, on a panel discussion in the UK where there were people from China and from the US and Korea and I was representing the EU. And all of them said more or less unisono, ITER remains the flagship and we need ITER information for all our programs. And in fact, everybody realized that they will have to increase their efforts in the breeding blanket area because this is where ITER might be so late that the information only comes about the integrated operation but not enough for the design decision. So I think that fairly sums up that the role of ITER is pretty much as important as it was before. With the changes to the design which they discussed, it will further contribute because the operation will already be in the full tungsten environment. And I think this is a clear reason why we still look at ETA and say this, is, this has to be done the way it will be done and it has to come and bring us all this, this information. So that's all about today. We heard there are problems, we heard there are ways to solve it and it will not change the role, the central role that ETA plays in the programs worldwide. For the time being, I thank you for your attention.